Instrument approach chart training continues with a question that comes up a lot in IFR flying. Where is the missed approach point? Well, like every question in aviation, the answer is, it depends. Let's start with a simple case. Here's the ILS approach at runway 4 at Easton. Kind of just a plain vanilla ILS approach. Let's look at the minimums for the ILS. 273 feet. And remember that this is a precision approach, so this is a decision altitude. What does this mean that it's a decision altitude? When you're on the approach, you're descending with vertical guidance by following the glide slope. So when you reach 273 feet, the decision altitude, you have to decide if you can continue the approach or go missed. And if you go missed, you'll execute the missed approach at that point. So simply put, the missed approach on an ILS, or any precision approach, is the point you're at when you're on the glide slope at the decision altitude. It's a defined spot. Now let's look at the localizer approach. There's no glide slope for vertical guidance. This is a non-precision approach. How is this flown? We start outside of the initial approach fix, RICME in this case, at say 2,000 feet. After crossing RICME, we could drop down to 1,600 feet by some time before the next fix, WEGRO. Then once we cross WEGRO, the final approach fix, we descend again down to 540 feet. But unlike on the ILS, we don't immediately decide what to do and execute a missed approach because this isn't a decision altitude, but a minimum descent altitude. We stay at this minimum altitude until we gain sight of the runway to make a landing approach. If we don't gain sight, we can execute the missed approach. Notice the solid black line turns into a thin hash marked line with directional arrow indicating the missed approach, but also notice that there's no defined point where this occurs. It's kind of left open-ended. So where is the missed approach point? And why isn't it precisely defined on the profile view? Well, the point we're looking at where the solid black line meets the thin hash marked one indicates the point on the precision approach where we reach the decision altitude on the glide slope. It doesn't apply for us on the non-precision approach. But there is still a missed approach point indicated on here. It's the 1DME point from the localizer of this approach, identifier IFGH. If you don't believe me, you can have a look at the amendment document for this approach in the navigation database review on the FAA website. Admittedly, this is a bit wonky, but it shows clearly here that the missed approach point is the 1DME off the localizer for the approach. So why not have this more clear on the approach plate? Well, for more context, let's look at the same approach plate profile on the Jeppesen approach plate, a commercial vendor providing approach plates to operators as a subscription service. Jeppesen, as opposed to the FAA, has made the decision to depict both the precision and non-precision missed approach points on their chart. The precision point is shown with the arrow pointing in the direction of the missed procedure coming from the glide slope at decision altitude, while the non-precision missed approach point is noted with the letter M, again at the 1DME point from the localizer. So the FAA chart doesn't have that detail and instead falls back on the convention of having that last point on the approach be the missed point. Let's have an even closer look at the profile view of the approach for this localizer. Notice the upside down black triangle at 2.5 DME. This is called the visual descent point. What this point represents is where you can make a normal descent from your minimum altitude to the runway. So if you're past the visual descent point and still haven't gotten sight of the runway and you're still at that minimum descent altitude, you won't be able to make a normal approach to land. This would be a time when you might think about doing a missed approach. Again though, because the missed approach point is the 1DME from the localizer, essentially the approach end of the runway, it's at that point that you would execute the missed procedure. But the visual descent point itself does not represent the defined missed approach point. On these non-precision approaches, the point where you decide to go missed and the point you actually execute the missed approach can be different points. This is as opposed to the ILS, where the decision point and execution point are one and the same. Now, not all FAA approach plates have this ambiguity about where the missed approach point is on the profile view. Why is this one special? Have a look at the missed approach procedure and we might get a clue. The first step is to start a climb straight out on a 041 heading up to 2000. So we'll be flying runway heading initially then. Let's look at the plan view to see what this looks like from the top down. As we're coming in on the approach, we're following the localizer down, which protects us from obstructions. And as we fly the mist, we're flying the same course on the way back up, so we're still protected. So as long as the approach doesn't have a maximum altitude, which is rare, and we don't see one here, 
we can start the climb prior to the missed approach point and stay on the course and still be assured protection. Let's contrast that with a different approach. Here's the RNAV GPS Alpha at College Park, go Terps. We see on the profile view that once again, the solid line meets the thin hash marked line indicating the missed approach. But notice that there's a defined point where this happens. In this case, it's the GPS waypoint for runway 15. Let's compare this to the localizer approach we just looked at. No defined missed approach point. Why is this different? You might say that maybe it's because with the GPS, we can identify where the runway is when with the localizer, we maybe couldn't. But what if we look at the climb out instructions on this missed approach? This one has us doing a climbing left turn to 2,100 feet. Remember the localizer approach at Easton involved a straight out climb on runway heading. If you look at the plan view here, you'll see that it's crucial we start the climbing left turn precisely at the runway. If we did it too early or too late, we couldn't be assured clearance from any of these obstructions. Here's another way that chart makers will define a missed approach point. Here's the ILS approach into Frederick, runway 23. Unlike the ILS at Easton, the points along the approach are not defined as DME distances, and crucially, the non-precision missed approach point is not even given a waypoint on the profile view. Instead, we need to look at the timetable underneath the airport diagram to see where the mist is. It says that the distance from the final approach fix to the missed approach point is 4.3 miles. The only way to discern this distance with the minimum equipment required for the approach, in other words, no GPS, is to time our course from the final approach fix and execute the mist after the time indicated for our ground speed. So, for example, if we had a ground speed on the approach of 90 knots, our time from the FAF to MAP would be 2 minutes and 52 seconds. So on these non-precision approaches, we might decide to go missed at one point, but make sure before you actually execute the missed approach that you check where the defined missed approach point is. This is an added challenge you don't need to deal with on a precision approach where there's no confusion about where the decision and execution point are.